Candlestick patterns are one of the main ways professional traders enter the market. So if you don't have an effective candlestick pattern you can use for entries, then it could be a main reason that you're not quite profitable yet. So whether you are a complete beginner or just someone who's been struggling with your trading for a while, by the end of this video, you will be able to quickly and easily spot a very effective candlestick pattern. This candlestick pattern has helped me win a large number of trades over the past few years and is a pattern I use to this day in my own trading. So right after the intro and disclaimer, I'm gonna give you every rule to this pattern so you too will have an effective candlestick pattern to use anytime you wanna place a trade. So if that sounds good, go ahead and click that like button for me, go ahead and subscribe if you are new. Welcome back, and just in case you're brand new, my name is Steven, I've been trading for a little over a decade, and on this channel, I share all my trading skills that I've learned throughout my trading career in order to try to help you become a better trader. So let's first take a look at the bearish version of this candlestick pattern you're going to be learning today. The bearish version of this candlestick pattern is something I call the SHEC. SHEC stands for Swing High Engulfing Candle. Let's break down the first part of this, Swing High. This means that this candlestick pattern can only occur at the swing high of an overall trend. Let's say trends are pushing up. I need to see this at the swing high or the highest high of a trend or at the swing high of a pullback. What that would look like is prices are moving down. It would have to be the highest candlestick of a particular pullback. That would be the swing high of the pullback. So that's the first step in understanding this candlestick pattern and the anatomy of it. Next up, we have engulfing candle. In case you don't know what an engulfing candle is, essentially, it is when we have a candle that is a color change candle, meaning we went from green to red in a bearish version of this, and the body of the red candle is larger than the body of the green candle. If those two rules are met, we have what is called an engulfing candle. In Forex, that engulfing candle will normally start at the same exact place as the previous candle. In stocks, you wanna see this candle start a little bit above it, for this swing high engulfing candle. So to give you an idea of what we could see and the way we could use this pattern, if prices were trending higher and we had, let's say RSI divergence, which we'll talk about in just a second. And let's say we were at a major level of structure, that might be a time I decide to use a candlestick pattern like the swing high engulfing pattern in order to enter a trade it gives you a good place to enter. And again, it's been effective for me over the years at proving to be profitable. Along with that, it gives you a very easy place to put your stop loss above the swing high of this swing high engulfing candle. And in the opposite direction, we can use this even if we're trending down as long as it is the top of a pullback. So that would look something like this. Markets are trending down and then this becomes the top of the pullback before the trend continuation in that downtrend. So before we take a look at a bullish version of this, let's go to some charts. I'll show you a live trade I'm in right now using this exact candlestick pattern along with the full breakdown of that trade so you can understand how I use this candlestick pattern in combination with full strategies. So let's go take a look at that right now. This trade was on the Euro Canada and I'm gonna break it down completely right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the candlestick pattern. Tell me when you spot it in the comment section or just say it out loud whenever you spot the actual pattern itself. Does that look familiar? Where price is right now, I'll zoom in a bit, do we have what I would identify as a swing high engulfing candle? Well, what are the rules? We need it to be the swing high, which is the highest high in trend or the highest high in a pullback. Is that the case here? Yes, this high, the red candle we see, is in fact the swing high of the overall trend so far. Is it an engulfing candle? Well, is the red body bigger than the green body? That answer is yes. So this is the actual candlestick pattern that we entered on. Now, let me break down the rest of the things that I'd like to combine with this swing high engulfing candle in order to turn it into a full strategy. Because as hopefully you already know, if you don't, no candlestick pattern is going to be some type of holy grail. You're going to have to combine different technical factors in order to ever come up with a profitable trading strategy. So a candlestick pattern is never going to be the secret the only thing this candlestick pattern does is that when we have other conditions met, like prices being at previous structure, like RSI divergence, it gives us an edge and a rules-based way to place a trade, which is very important. A lot of traders 
try to place trades with random entry reasons all the time and that equals very inconsistent results whereas if you place trades in a consistent way with an effective pattern and with an easy place to put your stop loss that can help you turn a non-profitable strategy into a profitable strategy so in this case we had our engulfing candle happen and on top of that if i zoom out to the daily chart and we scroll left a bit you can see that this swing high engulfing pattern was happening at a major level of resistance so that's already step number one and if you don't know yet i create strategies based on something called cest we have our conditions followed by our entry followed by stops and followed by targets. So the conditions here are we have a major level of structure on the daily chart. The other condition that I really like to see but isn't completely necessary is RSI divergence on either time frame. This RSI divergence can be happening here on the daily chart, which we do have, and or on the four hour chart, which we'll look at in a second. So RSI divergence means that prices are creating higher highs while your RSI indicator is creating equal or lower highs in this case we have equal highs on the rsi indicator whilst getting higher highs on price i am nearly positive i just used the word whilst and i don't even know what that means so while getting higher highs on price lower highs on the rsi indicator man it's hard to believe english is my first language dropping down now though to the four hour chart as you can see here on the rsi indicator we do in fact have what looks to be equal highs what is price doing creating higher highs so in this case whenever we're looking at this from a strategy standpoint a rules-based strategy which is what you need especially at the beginning or if you're struggling in order to become profitable and consistent if we look at this from a rules-based strategy standpoint we have the condition of the daily 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 major structure my voice is not working today at all we have the condition of rsi divergence and now after having those two things the only thing i'm looking for next is going to be my entry now the whole purpose of this video is to teach you this entry pattern that is our swing high engulfing pattern so we obviously have that entry for a stop loss like i already said i like to put the stop loss right above the previous high the swing high engulfing candle so my stop loss goes above that and for my target specifically for me you can pick how you want to take targets i normally look back at previous structure and try to get something at or above a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio as you'll see whenever i hit play this is a trade we sent out last week by the way i'll put an image of that right over here so you can see that i sent this trade to eap and ttc university members i send these out two to five times a week if you want to learn more about that you can follow the first link in the description or go to www.ttcfxuniversity.com if not that's completely fine too but as you can see i did send this out in what i call email analysis now directly after sending this out in email analysis prices did in fact drop low enough to hit our targets right here at previous structure and for a little over a one to one at a 1.4 to one reward to risk ratio now let's take a look at a bullish version of this pattern if you haven't guessed by now it's the complete opposite of the bearish version of this pattern i call this one the s l e c this stands for swing low engulfing candle and in this case we're looking for the same thing we want to make sure that our candlestick pattern is either the swing low of a trend meaning we're trending down and it's the lowest candle of the trending down that we have if that sentence even makes sense hopefully you understand what i'm saying other than that it can be the part it can be a part of a pullback so we can have prices pushing higher and then this just needs to happen at the end of a pullback this wick needs to be the lowest wick of the pullback of an uptrend that's how it's going to be classified as a swing low engulfing candle now ways we can use this are exactly the same major level of support something like rsi divergence when prices are trending down in order to capture the reversal of a market or prices trending higher and using it at a pullback as we just discussed now let's go take a look at an example of this on the charts here on the pound swiss chart what has just happened well hopefully you were able to spot the reversal in price we have prices that have been consolidating here not really putting in new highs and then eventually we get this push up 
pullback and a new higher high. This is our immediate sign of a possible uptrend starting. So in this case, we're looking at an uptrend. And if we go to this swing high right here, what I mean by the swing low of a pullback is from this swing high, looking at the pullback, it's going to be the lowest candle that happens throughout the pullback. So here, it was this candle. Here it was this candle. These do not count as the swing low of the pullback. Obviously, this does count as the swing low of the pullback. So we're waiting on that to occur. The swing low of a pullback and that candle also be an engulfing candle. So let's see if you can spot when that happens here on the pound Swiss as I push prices forward. Not there, not there, not there, not quite. Does that candlestick pattern look familiar? Well, it should because in this case, we have the swing low of a pullback from our swing high, and this candle is also an engulfing candle. So this would be a valid version of the swing low engulfing candle. Now, in this case, we are going to look at this as a full strategy yet again using the acronym CEST. The main things I like to use as conditions are areas of value and some indicators. The areas of value I like the most are major levels of structure and moving averages. And on top of that, I really like RSI divergence as well. Those are probably a part of 90% of the trading opportunities that I take is those three indications, major structure, moving averages, and the RSI indicator doing some type of divergence along with a candlestick pattern or chart pattern like you're learning in this video. So for the conditions of this specific trade, what do we have? We have prices pulling back to a major level of structure. So I'm going to count that as condition number one. Check. We have prices at an area of value being this moving average. This moving average is the 50 EMA. So we have two different conditions met. And if you wanted to turn this into an entire strategy, then what you could say is I need at least two conditions. Say you use structure like this area of resistance that now could possibly become support like a moving average as an area of value, whichever one you want to use. And you tell yourself, I need to see at least two conditions before looking for a possible entry. Now, what could that entry be? Obviously, for the scope of this video, because that's what you're learning, it could be this swing low engulfing candle right here. Now, how would we set this up? Well, C and E are now covered. We need to find a place for our stop and our target before we ever press the buy button. So let's do that. Go ahead and put a position tool on the chart. Stop loss is going to go under our swing low of this candle. And again, my target at structure slash about a 1.4 to one is what I normally use. If we click play, you'll see that prices did in fact push up and hit that quite easily. Now, just because I know for a fact there's going to be a few people in the comment section that try this three times and lose all three times and then just go through the comment section yelling that it doesn't work at all because of those three attempts, let me explain to you how trading actually works. That way you don't fall into that trap. If you don't have a full trading plan right now, you do not need to trade this. If you do not follow the steps I'm about to tell you, even if you know this exact candlestick pattern and the full strategy we've discussed with CEST throughout this video, even with knowing that information, you will lose money if you do not listen to the steps I'm about to tell you. In order to be a professional trader and actually make money in any financial market, you will not only need a candlestick pattern. You will not only need strategies. You're going to need a strategy that makes money over time. You're going to need a risk management plan that keeps you emotionless and you're going to need the trading psychology in order to stay disciplined to those two things. So knowing a strategy and knowing an effective candlestick pattern is not the secret. It's not the holy grail. Having good risk management with no strategy equals losing money as well. And you could have a good risk management plan and a good strategy, but not have any trading psychology and never stay disciplined to those two things then you would still lose money. You need a combination of all three of these things. Think about it like gambling and a casino. Why do casinos make money? A casino is not a nonprofit organization. They exist because that business makes loads of money. How does the casino do it? The casino does this by having a small advantage over the player in every single game on the floor. Every game in a casino has a slight advantage over anyone that walks in and gambles. 
What we do with all three of these is we create a full trading plan that switches the script. We create a full trading plan with a strategy that's proven to give us the edge, a risk management plan that keeps us out of our emotions, keeps us from making these emotional mistakes like switching strategies and moving our stop loss and moving our target. And the trading psychology and discipline to stick to all of that gives us a slight advantage, switches the script and turns us into the casino. For that reason, if we can master these three skills, a strategy that makes money over time, a risk management plan that keeps you out of your emotions, and trading psychology and or the discipline to stick to those things, then you inevitably become the casino and over a long period of time, you're the one with the advantage. You're the one coming away making money. Otherwise, if you do not follow the steps to create a full trading plan and you decide to go out here and just randomly trade this candlestick pattern, I can nearly guarantee you, you will lose money. Because at that point, you're still the gambler walking into the casino. The market is the casino until you create an effective trading plan that gives you an edge over it. So let's talk about practical steps. For a strategy, you need to learn or create a rules-based strategy. I like using the acronym CEST because it helps keep me consistent. I have conditions, entries, stops, and targets for every trade I place. This not only keeps me consistent, it gives me the ability to back test and validate this strategy. I can take a look at all of these rules through historic data and I can back test them. That's what that is. Take a look at every time this, this rules-based strategy happened and I can see, has it provided an edge in the past? Is it something that's proven to make money? If the answer is yes, then I now have a strategy that's proven to make money. In terms of risk management, this is something that's completely up to the trader. Some traders have a very high risk tolerance. Some have a very low one. You need to determine what amount of money, what percent of your account can you stand to lose without becoming extremely emotional on specific trades. On one specific trade, what is that number? A lot of traders choose 2%. That might be too high, it might be too low, but this is about the average of what retail professional traders that are, again, professional and profitable tend to use. It's something between 1% and 2% of their account value that they have at risk on a particular trade. As in they have a set stop loss and the amount of money they're going to lose on that stop loss is normally between 1% and 2% of their total account value. And again, this is something you'll need to decide for yourself in terms of trading psychology, backtesting, having a good risk management plan will help a lot with your trading psychology. Understanding that trading is about a statistic advantage will help as well. And reading a ton of books slash listening to a lot of videos of Mark Douglas is something else that really helped me with my trading psychology at the beginning of my trading career. If you go watch any videos from Mark Douglas or read any of his books, you'll see a lot of similarities in the way I speak about trading psychology and in what he teaches. The main reason for that is I count him as my main mentor that taught me how to have good trading psychology and discipline and be okay and have a good trading mindset in my own personal trading. So go take those actionable steps. And if you want some help taking these steps, then of course we do have some space available in the TTC Forex University. You can get there by the top link in the description or by going to www.ttcfxuniversity.com. If that's not something you're interested in, that's completely fine too. Be sure you're subscribed here, like the video if you made it to the end, comment if you made it to the end, and I will like every comment that says they made it to the end. I wish you the best of luck on your future trades. It's hot here in Georgia, so I'm gonna go hit the pool and I'll see you in the next video. Talk soon.